Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Glacial Hammer build. But before I start this update, I want to let you guys know that I will be discontinuing this version of the Glacial Hammer. And I'm going to attempt a chance and or find a Hegemony's Era to create the new and improved Glacial Hammer, bro. Um, this was the dual wield champion, and I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with this character. But if you really want to go for the heavy hitting freezes, I really think it's going to be much better as an Inquisitor. And I'm going to just vaguely talk about it. But first off, I just want to show you like the clearing potential of how the build feels, and part of the reason of why I want to remake it. So Blood Aqueducts is a perfect reason for this because we're not trying to show the damage. We're trying to show like what feels a bit inconsistent. Um, so the first thing to note is the pretty much entire reason I decided to go champion is from Worthy Foe, which makes it so you don't have to worry about accuracy. I find accuracy to be a pain in the ass. Um, but the problem with this node is it says enemies you taunt take increased damage, which is your multiplier, and enemies taunted by you cannot evade attacks. But Conqueror gives you 100% chance to hit, but if you miss your first initial hit, you have to swing again at the pack. So it's not like you have RT. It makes the character feel like they're really only super good against single target. And with Glacial Hammer already not being the best AoE clear skill, I'll show you what I mean. Like, it doesn't feel bad, but you can tell that it's, it's really lacking some AoE. And this is with Ancestral Call and one of the jewels. Oh, cool, look, humility. Thanks, bro. That's pretty much how the character feels. Not Greetings. really as good as I would like Glacial Hammer to be, but I don't know if you guys know this. For some reason, I just have this thing with Glacial Hammer where I just really want to play it. I don't really know why, and I just really want to play it. So, uh, this is the current tree that we have. We were going to go ahead and go into Coordination, grab our Life Nodes, Trickery, and Assassination. This build does pretty much severely lack crit as well. We're only 21% crit chance with a uh, weapon that has 6.3%. We would probably even swap to a Frost Breath, which would lower my crit more, which kind of forces me into a crit chance gem. Now, this is before power charges and, you know, Diamond Flask and everything else. But like I said, the build just didn't feel very consistent. Um, and our Uber Lab point, we were going to go Unstoppable Hero, although I really do like Fortitude, but Unstoppable Hero is really sick and so is first to strike last to fall that's basically what i was doing i was weapon swapping casting a blood magic aura and weapon swapping back for the buff um it's important to put it on weapon swap because if you were to normally cast blood magic skill you have to wait for this cooldown but if you were to weapon swap you just tap it and then swap back and you get your adrenaline buff so anyway i want to show you guys the kind of newer glacial hammer build uh and kind of why i wanted to talk a little bit about this person so, the new Glacial Hammer build is from an Inquisitor. Uh, this is 121 points. Obviously, you can chip off damage anywhere or life anywhere you'd like. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about this tree compared to the previous one. So, the characters get roughly the same amount of life. Uh, the Inquisitor should get maybe a tad bit more. Um, the Glacial Hammer champion uses one jewel right here and we pick up the rest of our conversion here our inquisitor is going to grab a jewel here which is you can see 10 20 30 50 strength well yeah 60 even so we're good and another jewel here on the way to the scion life wheel so we get a full conversion as an inquisitor 
Um, the Inquisitor does get plus one max fire res. We get so much more fucking crit as an Inquisitor. Um, here, we get 200% crit chance with the staff, 150% melee crit chance, and then we have an additional 50% crit chance, and then we get crit chance against enemies that are not affected by ailments, and then we have, let's see, so we have three base power charges, four from here, five from here, and then Hegemony's Era gives us plus one, so that would be six power charges. Just to bring up Hegemony's Era for you guys to compare it to like the weapon that my other character was using. Um, so my character, let's pop this up here, has a weapon if you look. The attacks per second is 1.49, it's 6% crit, and it has a top end of 225. I'd say those are like the high points. Hegemony's Era is a two-hander, so naturally it's going to have a much higher top end. So it's got about double the top end. This is 225, this is 399. Uh, Hegemony's hits nearly as fast. It goes up to 1.45, this is 1.49, so it's going to feel really nice to use. Um, it also rolls with block chance. While, uh, well, it's got 18% block because it's a staff. And then you roll plus 6 block, so it's 24% block. And then you grab block nodes on the tree, and this some really cool stuff, but... You can see here you have a chance to get a power charge if you knock an enemy back with melee damage. Since we are going crit related on our build, we do come up here and grab like blood trauma into serpent stance. So in terms of critting, anytime we crit we knock back, anytime we knock back we have a chance of power charges. Uh, we're going to use an assassin's mark ring, but blood trauma is going to be good to sustain our power charges potentially on boss fights. But I'm pretty sure the bosses are going to die really quick anyway. Um, one of the other things I pick up with Inquisitor, this is a bit high on the points because I, I really wanted to get AoE because the main reason I'm remaking the character is, is AoE. So I said there's no point in playing an Inquisitor if I can't get AoE. So I ended up grabbing 60% AoE since we grabbed the Inquisitor, well, Templar AoE and the Witch AoE. Now, I originally couldn't figure out a way to get into Witch. The build looked like this previously. Um, I think... Instead of here, I was, I connected through here, picked up the blunt instrument armor scaling, and then I think I had one point here for tireless, and then also down here for two point jewel, and then armor mastery, but I decided, you know, it's softcore, I just want to see like how much more damage works, also I've been using a tabula for so long, scaling armor on the belly of the beast is pretty trash, so until I get an elder, like, chess piece i'm probably not gonna try to armor scale so by going this way we get uh crow preparation with the life we get uh instability we get a power charge so we may, or not a power we get a power charge and a jewel i basically traded this jewel for this one here um the main thing over here is we get 40 percent freeze duration which i think is going to be really good for freezing um and then we come down i picked up alchemist and the reason why i picked up alchemist is simply because we're going to be playing an Inquisitor. Since we're wielding a staff, we're not going to have a good movement skill. I mean, you could try charge dash and stuff, but I came up with this conclusion. Um, the reason why I didn't want to play like Hegemony's Era in the first place is because staves equal terrible movement. Like it just does not feel good compared to essentially like whirling blades or uh, shield charge in my opinion. So with this Inquisitor, we are not going to grab Augury, and I'm really upset about it, and we're not going to grab Instruments of Virtue, and instead we're going to go down the Pious Path, which means that you could technically play this character as a Scion. Uh, it would do, I believe, less damage, but it would be easier to build as a uh, Inquisitor Juggernaut. Uh, my buddy Aftershock recommended it, simply because if you go Inquisitor Juggernaut as Scion, you get the nearby enemies take increased elemental, and you still are immune to elemental ailments on consecrated ground. Juggernaut would give you cannot be chilled, cannot be stunned, a thousand accuracy, and endurance charge generation. But anyway, let's talk about the actual pick for Inquisitor here. So there's the, the standard, pretty easy to understand, righteous provenance into inevitable judgment. Simply put, critical strikes ignore enemy monster elemental resistance. You don't scale penetration anymore, you stack crit chance, crit multi, and you're good to go. Uh, and then the purpose of going pious path is really cool. So Sanctify makes it so we can just basically create consecrated ground in a number of ways, whether it's on kill, um, 
but it doesn't really matter. The only thing to really note here is the chance to create consecrated ground when you hit a rare or unique enemy. And then creating it on kill is just kind of like a nice little extra effect. But this, this node isn't really anything too special in my opinion. It's really this node, Pious Path. So what Pious Path does is it gives us 6% of maximum mana energy shield per second while on consecrated ground. That's actually like really, really, really good. Uh, we don't really have to worry about going oom ever. And the amount of life regen we have on consecrated ground is going to be pretty crazy. We're not going to have too much leech in this build. I haven't figured out what to do for leech. Maybe blood rage if blood rage is... I, blood rage might be physical damage, so never mind. Um, but anyway, I think with the regen we'll be all right. And we could figure out leech like a little bit later since reflect has been toned down. But um, this is going to give us 25% attack cast speed while on consecrated ground. That's basically like onslaught without the movement speed. But it also gives us immunity to elemental ailments while on consecrated ground, which means all we have to do is run a sulfur flask. And if we tap our sulfur flask, we basically become immune to fire, ice, lightning, and chill. Which means that we have space to run unique flasks. Uh, and, more importantly, we have space to run a... Da -da -da -da, adrenaline Quicksilver. So an Adrenaline Quicksilver is like 70% increased movement speed, I believe. Because 40% on a Quicksilver and then 30% from Adrenaline. And then by getting Alchemist, you actually can scale the movement speed from the Quicksilver. So the goal for the Inquisitor is to just move very fluidly um, from pack to pack rather than having to use a mobility skill to get there. Um, and I'm really, like, literally the only reason I'm grabbing Pious Path is to make sure that the build clears at a at a nice rate. You know, after playing the Toxic Air, or Toxic Rain, Caustic Arrow build, I want to make sure that the build feels really good. <clears throat> Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Like I said, I just wanted to get you guys up to date. Uh, one other cool thing to note is I was talking about block on the tree. Oh yeah, this build will have an issue with dex, by the way. You do have a dex node right here. We're going to need like 90-something dex for hatred, I think. Um, we do grab accuracy in the build as well, so accuracy is not a problem. We've got precision. Uh, we have accuracy nodes down here, I believe. Are these accuracy nodes? Here's accuracy nodes over here. Serpent Stand says accuracy. I forgot, we have accuracy somewhere. You can you can basically see it on the tree. Um, oh yeah, the last thing I want to note is that Hegemony's era was, let's see, 18% block plus 6%, so we have 24% block chance with a staff. From our tree, we get 24, 26, 28, 30, 36. Now, if I somehow did my math wrong, I'm sorry. So that's 36% block. And then over here in our... Which tab is it? Glacial tab. I have a perfect roll of roomies, which puts us to 56% block. And then because of flask effectiveness, I believe will be 60%. I didn't actually look at the percent, but 60% block is pretty solid in my opinion. And then I think we'll have like maybe like 25 spell block or something too, which is just pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. It's it's pretty yummy. Um, yeah, that's about it though. The, the chances of me finding a Hegemony's Era, I'm not really sure of, but that kind of is like, like sort of what like breathes some new life into me for continuing the SSF adventure is having a goal and wanting to sort of stick towards it, you know? Anyway, though, that's pretty much about it for me. I uh, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I will try to post both of these skill trees on the uh, on YouTube comments for you guys. For both of them, I did help Alira. So, like I said, that's about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I just woke up, and I hope you guys are having a great time.